Psalms 1 and 3, and I appreciate you standing for that one scripture again. We've read it over and over. We could probably just uh, recite it by now. We should know uh, that by heart. But And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in, in his season. Um, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Can everybody say prosper? Amen. I want to preach tonight, speak to you on the spiritual fruit of the blessed man. Okay? We talked about the blessing of fruitfulness last week, but I'd like to preach just simply on the subject, the spiritual fruit. Everybody say spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit of the blessed man. Could you just say God bless the word? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. You can be seated. I, uh, I, I've really been stirred this week because uh, I, I, I believe this with all my heart. I just think our families can be saved. I, I just think that people that we've been working on, and even this week, prayers have been answered. I don't like the situation, but we've been praying uh, for people to, to make a move towards God. And sometimes God has to do things to cause people to make a move. And so I've been praying for family. I've been praying for friends. And uh, I, I heard a message uh, that was really amazing. Um, it kind of shook me up, stirred my soul the other night. And I had it on. And the preacher uh, made a statement. He said, the most horrifying thing that could ever happen to me would be that the Lord come back and people that I love and care about so deeply that I, I walk with, I work with, I, I see on a day-to-day -day basis that I don't maybe share the gospel or witness to them. He said the most fearful thing would be when the Lord comes back and says, depart those people and they leave. And as they're leaving and I'm walking through the gates, and they're going the other direction. And they're screaming at me saying, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? And sometimes we're so scared to share and witness. And well, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I don't want to cause no trouble. I don't want nobody to stir up nothing. And, and sometimes we hold back. But if you have an opportunity, we need to witness and share that. And I began to stand out at recess today, and I saw coworkers and people drive by that I'm like, Lord, let me somehow reach them because I don't want them to one day look at me and say, why didn't you tell me? You know me. And I thought about that. It made an impact on me, that message. People got to tell somebody about this before it's too late. And... So I've been stirred about our families, and I know it's sometimes discouraging when we come here and they're not here with us. But I'm going to tell you, don't be discouraged. Just be that much more uh, passionate in your prayer life to, to reach and call on them. God is going to bring them to this place. God is going to bring them to salvation again. It, it, it's, it's part of life. It's a process. Some people run the course, don't they? But they're going to run out. Of, they're going to run out of places and things, and and it's going to come to the last thing. And that's what we pray: is for God bring them back to this place so I can see them be saved. But most of all, give me time for them to be saved and let me enjoy the worship and praise and let me enjoy church with them. Amen. Isn't that what our prayers are? Don't we have people that we want to see in here? And I've been so burdened for that. But we spoke last week on the subject, the blessing of fruitfulness, in Lesson 6. And tonight, we speak on the spiritual fruit of the blessed man. And the process of being fruitful and being blessed is part of our relationship with God. Our relationship is being fruitful. When you are fruitful, and what I mean by that, I'm not talking about to receive a blessing, but to be a blessing. Um... It should not be our desire to say, I just need a blessing. I need a blessing. Hey, we all need a blessing. And I thank the Lord for blessings. But what I need to be fruitful in the most is the spiritual things. I need spiritual blessings. I need God to, to walk with me and to encourage me and to strengthen me. And so um, 
we're actually blessed if we have spiritual fruit. Now, we can fulfill ourselves on the natural, but the Spirit is something we should long for. Just as we get up, sometimes I'll get up during the night, and one of them kids will be up, and I'm like, what are you doing? I was thirsty. And they're getting something to drink because they're desiring something, and they get up for it. And so there should be a desire to get up sometimes and, and, and stir ourselves to reach for the spiritual. And so we do that through prayer. We do that through ans answering the call of God and honoring God. One of the spiritual things that we do that we partake of in spiritual fruit, fruitfulness is our obedience unto God. When we obey God and His Word, uh, we are being fruitful. We are established in our relationship with God. People need a relationship with God. Uh, I was speaking to a pastor just the, right before church, and he said, Brother Smith, you know, people are losing their relationship with God. When we lose our relationship with God, we really lose our relationship with each other. He said, uh, can you believe that uh, there are people that I know of personally that have lived this way a long time but are, but are at each other's throat all the time? And he said, I never dreamed that, that that would happen. They used to be friends, but something's got in the way. What, what has affected their relationship? Well, when your relationship gets away from God and you don't have that relationship with God, it can f affect everything outside the boundaries. And so in the process of being fruitful and being blessed, we must establish that relationship with God. And so the relationship between the blessed man and God has a profound and lasting effect. When you have a relationship with God, with God, there is an effect that comes from having a relationship with God. You see the effects. Uh, you know, if I, throw a, if I throw this glass up in the air and I don't try to catch it and I just let it go, the effects is going to be broken glass. And I thought about in our spiritual walk with God, in our relationship, there should be things that should be seen not so much in the natural eye, but we should see things in the spiritual eye. Now, when you work on a relationship with someone, you establish a relationship of talking to them and, and listening to them and caring for them and showing them. Well, same thing with God. Sometimes our spiritual relationship requires us to communicate with God, to talk to Him, to love Him, to read His Word, to be faithful and to obey Him. And we should... There's no, there's no if and but about it. When you have a walk with God where you read His Word, you're faithful, you give, you do the things of the kingdom of God, you will see uh, the blessings and you will be fruitful from it. There's going to be uh, uh, things that you're going to see. You will see the effects of it. Amen. How many have seen the effects of you doing something for the kingdom of God or, and your giving or your prayer time? How many see effects? Anybody had answers? Anybody seen God do something? Amen. That little testimony about the dentist office. See, when I pray about it, I don't just say, well, I need to pray about it. I, I start praying. I actually start praying. And it encourages you because when answers come forth, you just like give God the praise. And you're like, you know what? I'm actually seeing something develop through a prayer life. Amen. And it encourages me to want to pray. Amen. And when I worship God and I live for God and I see the blessings of God, it encourages me to want to continue to do that for the kingdom of God. Would you give the Lord a praise tonight? Amen. God has a profound lasting effect on us. And it, it, it establishes a character about us as an individual. The resulting change, there should be a change. In us, if you have a relationship with God, uh, there, there should be a change. I got, I got to use this example today. A little girl come in, and she was all smiling and everything, and she was just all just, I mean, this was like when I first got there. I mean, the sun was just coming up. I'm, it's my duty day, and so it's still dark. I'm walking in there, and she's like all bubbly and everything. She said, guess what? And I said, you're in love. <laughs> she said, how did you know? <laughs> said, who told you? Did you talk to my mom? I said, I don't talk to your mama. She's on the other end of the school. She's like a para-teacher. And she said, yeah, and she was telling him his name, and he's so cute, and he's blonde-headed and all this. I'm like, blah, 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 you know. And she said, oh, you know. 
but she was excited. It was having an effect on her. And even today I said, uh, you need to pay attention. Get your mind off of, you know, you know who. Don't you say nothing. Don't say nothing. Like and she got perked up and she got all excited. And, and I, would, I would use that all day. Pay attention. You know, she was just, but it had an effect on her. We should have a, a relationship with God that has an effect on us. We ought to be excited and in love with God, our Savior. I mean, we need to get up with, you know what, it's kind of going rough today, but I know my God, He's going to come through for me in the end. Amen? And we ought to be, I, I know it's not always that way. We don't just get up and just, just all bubbling and excited, but hey, look, we do have that opportunity. There's many times I drive by that cemetery and I just give God praise when I don't have a praise. I say, God, thank you, Jesus. You know, and so uh, there should be a change. When you have a relationship with God, it's going to change. You're going to have a different outlook on things. Uh, and so the resulting change in man's behavior is due to the influence of God's spirit and the nature which is called spiritual fruit. We're seeing spiritual fruits. Boy, I love seeing uh, new converts when they first come into the Lord, get the Holy Ghost, get baptized, where are they at? Boom, right there where everything's happening. I, I, I remember one time a preacher, he said one time that, uh, and I think I, I remember who the preacher was, but he said, I used to get so aggravated with some of the, uh, the, 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 the older saints or saints that have been in, the, in this a long time. It was like uh, one man made a statement like, oh, here they go again, you know. And he's thinking, why, did, why, did, would you, why would you say that? They're all excited, bubbly, happy, rejoicing, shouting, and carrying on. You know what? They're excited because they've got something. They found a relationship with God. And he was making a point that we should still feel the same way. How's our relationship the first time we met him years ago? It should still be the same. Amen. We should still be happy about this God that we fell in love with at an altar who saved us from our sins. Oh, I can't believe they're doing that again. Oh, come on now. We don't, we don't just do this and then quit. and then We, we got we to gotta keep loving God. And there should be more fruit. Once you pluck the fruit off, there's more that's going to come back in due season. Amen? And so fruit is defined as uh, a product. Everybody say a product. Fruit is defined as a product. The effect of consequence of an action or operation a fruit, by definition, is a product, an issue, or a result. And so, in your walk with God, in your relationship with God, we should see results. Amen. We should see results. Uh, now, I'm having a little problem. Uh, I hadn't felt too good. Well, take two of these for the next three or four days, and you should see results. That's what people will say. Uh, well, do this right here, and uh, have you ever tried to fix something? And uh, we, we get online and try to fix something on the computer, and okay, press this button, press that button, you know, and I'm thinking, this is not going to work. But I went through the whole process, and I paid attention, and I listened, I did everything they said to do, and the final result was, oh, it's working now. I got it, I got it. Thank you so much. Is there anything else? I no, I'm good. Thank you. Anybody ever done that before? Hey, look, is it the same way with God? If you follow his instruction, if you do what he says, sometimes we want to rush it and say, I don't see how this is going to work. Okay, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep believing. And then it's like all of a sudden it happens. It's like, oh, I got it. I got it. And the Lord's like, is there anything else I can do? No, I got it. We're good. Thank you. Would you fill out a little survey for me? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Whatever. On the end of this, and we usually hang up, don't we, on the little survey. Maybe God's saying, hey, is there something else that I can do for you? No, but there's something I can do for you. I want to give you praise. I, I want to, in this relationship, I don't want it to be one-dimensional. I don't want this to be all God. I want to turn around and give God what he deserves. It's all about many times what God's going to do for me, but what can I do for God? Amen? What can I do in my praise? and work? So in our walk with God, we should receive results and 
like I said, it's just part of serving God. If you live for God, you're faithful, when you do these things, you're going to see results. You're going to see answer prayer. You're going to see things happen because that's just part of it. Amen? Ask and you shall receive. So the fruit of the Spirit is the visible manifestation, the visible life of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit at work. People need to see the Holy Ghost at work. And I'm not talking about just a job. I mean doing something at work. People need to see it in action. <clears throat> Amen. They need to see it in, their, in your walk, in your lifestyle, in your conversation. Yes, in our dress, in our, 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 our living, our attitude, our conversation. Do they see the Holy Ghost at work? Do they see, is it visible to them? Or is there anybody that might say, I wonder if that person has the Holy Ghost. They go to that church out there. Do they have the Holy Ghost? There should not be a person that should say, I wonder if they got what they say they, what they believe in. They need to see it, right? Praise the Lord. They need to see it in a crisis, in a trial, in a situation maybe that's happening. Can they see the effects? Can they see the fruit? Is anybody seeing the fruit? Are they just seeing the tree? Uh, are they just seeing the limb? I want somebody to see my fruits, amen? I want somebody to know that this is real. Amen. Can you give the Lord praise? <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had this guy, he, he came up to me today and he said, he, 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 we were just standing there, he's a new teacher, and he just kind of leaned over and he said, now, y'all's church, y'all don't sit down much, do you? I said, well, when the Spirit's moving, No. I said, when the Spirit's moving, we're usually up and down and worshiping. He said, I, I don't know what to say about ours. He said, we sit all the time. And he said, that tells me something. And I said, what's that? He said, the Spirit's not moving. <laughs> he said, I can see getting up and down. He said, no, I, I, don't, I don't know about all that. He said, I've never been. He said, but if the Spirit's moving and God's moving, he said, I can see people having to get up. You got to move when, when God moves. But he said, we don't move. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, you have to start somewhere. I said, you might need to be that example. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, because if I do that, they're going to move me out. He said, so I will move. And I got to thinking about that. He was being serious. And I'm thankful that I can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You can worship. You can get Hey, I'm thankful to be a part of church that if the, if the Holy Ghost gets to moving and you, you know, if you like something, you, you worship in it. And, and, and you know what? A song is singing about where you're at and, and it's just reached down and it's pulled you up. Man, you just begin to worship God. You got the freedom. I'm, 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 you know what? It would be really difficult. I don't think I could be one of those pastors like, hey, look, y'all need to sit down. We don't do that. We don't need to do that. Let's get a little crazy, all right? I don't know if I could, I don't even know if I could be that kind of pastor, but I like the fact that, you know, just go ahead. Just do what you got to let God. I like God leading. I don't want to have to lead anybody in, in worship and praise. Amen. I, I just want you to feel after the Spirit of the Lord. And my favorite part about church and I'm not going to call any names, but I, I, can, I can point to a few people here. My favorite part is when the Lord starts getting a hold of you and watching you just squirm and just can't help it, and you just finally just give in, and you just go after it, you know. I, I like seeing that. That's just the presence of the Lord. That's just God dealing with you. And, and, and so, and you don't hold back. We don't want to hold back, amen. And so, do others see something in your walk with God? Do others see fruit on your vine? Do others see something growing on your tree? Uh, is it invisible or is it visible to them? Amen. Uh, the Bible says that by their, by their fruits you shall know them. I want somebody to know what I got. I don't have to tell anybody. I don't have to make a big deal about, about it. I can just be myself and be what the Lord has put on the inside of me. And be that which is fruitful in the spirit, be spirit, the spiritual fruit, and they're going to know. You don't have to tell anybody. They are going 
to know. Amen. Would you give the Lord a praise? Praise the Lord. Amen. Do others see something in your walk with God? The degree to which we submit ourselves to God. When, when somebody can see God in you, that is a measure of degree that you have in God. Okay? And so we respond to uh, His influence and maintain a growing relationship with Him. We should have a growing relationship. This is, you don't go backwards in living for God. You can't. You go forward. There should be a growing relationship. In other words, you should desire and want and just, I, I should hear you every now and then say, Brother David, I just got a burn to pray more. There should never be a time if we're going to be fruitful spiritually to say, Brother David, pray for me. I just don't have a desire to pray no more. <laughs> I just don't desire to, I, I don't know, I just, I, I don't care to worship no more. That's not a good sign. And usually people don't say that. Usually what they'll do, tell me if I'm right. Usually what they'll do is like, they won't tell you the inside is like, I just lost that desire. I don't see the need to do that anymore. They'll just not come back, and that's backsliding. But what we need to be doing is like, I just got to somehow, I need to pray more. I just need to, to read. Do you ever have those moments where you just feel like you just, you want to read more of the Word? You want to pray more? I tell you what it does. When you really need something so desperately, it'll put you in a place where you will be forced in your spirit, and that's a good thing. I, I, I need to read because I, I need to get answers here. I got to have answers here, and, and, and I got to pray because I'm not getting. And, and so we pray until something takes place and something happens, and so we change the degrees like we would on a thermometer. We change it. We turn it up a little bit. That prayer, we turn it up a notch because we need to. we got to get an answer. And that's what we need to do. That's how you grow in a relationship with God. Amen. Would you give the Lord praise? Amen. <laughs> praise God. And so the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence that we have the Spirit on, in our lives. How do we know we have the fruit? It's the evidence by what we have. And so the Lord longs for us to remain in His presence. It was the Lord's desire for Adam and Eve to live in his presence, to stay in his presence. You know, Adam and Eve had a kid today. They said, they said, Brother Smith, uh, if Adam and if, if Eve wouldn't, if they wouldn't have sinned in the garden, they'd have probably lived forever. I said, they would have. They, they, they wouldn't, you know, uh, because, you know, death hardship, suffering, pain came through their disobedience. When you disobey God, don't you see the suffering and pain that comes from that? And we, we deal with that not only emotionally, mentally, physically, but spiritually. And so the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 4, if you have your Bibles, you'll turn there quickly. And I'm moving fast here tonight. John 15 and 4. It says, and we're familiar with this scripture, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. That's, that's good stuff there. Abide means to continue. So basically we're saying continue in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it continue in the vine. No more can you accept, except ye continue in me. God can't continue in us if we don't continue in him. It's a continuation process. What we do is pick up where we left off. But in the, the days in between, we don't ever stop praising. We don't ever stop praying. Our spiritual fruitfulness. Now, think about growing your garden uh, like you maybe would uh, as far as church. If we only water and we only, uh, 
you know, pull up weeds on Wednesdays and Sundays, we're going to have Monday and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to deal with. So we can't afford in our spiritual walk to be fruitful with God or, or desire to be a blessed man or blessed woman to just pray and worship and read and do Wednesday night and Sunday. A spiritual, mature Christian, we should on Monday be praying and on Tuesday be reading because you're pulling, in essence, weeds. We don't just water and pull weeds on Wednesdays and Sundays with your garden. Well, that's the two days I have available because you're going to get caught in the in-between. Between, what if it rains on Sunday? What if it rains on Wednesday? Well, I'll just do it the next sunny day on Wednesday and Sunday. Well, by that time, the, 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 gra the grass and the weeds are going to grow up and it's going to choke you. Same thing in our spiritual walk. That's why Wednesday nights are so important because what I do is that Monday and Tuesday I have dealt with that's trying to choke me, I can pull those out with the Word, pull it out with well, worship, and I can like, you know what, I, I'm good to go. But Thursday and Friday I'm going to be dealing with, and Saturday, and i got to be back Sunday. But in the process, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be doing all of that. I'm not just going to wait to Sunday. Some people, the only time they pick up their Bible is when the, when the preacher on Wednesday says, let's open our Bibles and turn to such and such. Hey, look, you need to pick up your Bible every day. That's your sword. You're going to battle. I've already challenged us as a church. Bring your Bibles with you. Hey, Amen. Don't go uh, to, 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 to work or to your day tomorrow without the Word. Amen. So abide means to continue to dwell, to remain nearby, to stand in, and to tarry in. Now, more than 130 times in the New Testament, the phrase Christ in you and you in Christ are used over 130 times. This tells us it emphasizes that God places on our relationship with Him. Him, He established, He is He, he wants a relationship with us that is in Him and He and us. 130 times. We've got to have Him. I've got to have Him on the inside. Amen. Would you give the Lord praise? I gotta have Him. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is developed in our relationship. That's where fruit grows through your relationship with God. And so with Him, He cultivates. We remain in His presence. We desire to be in His presence. When we cannot be in His presence, then that's where problems occur. Okay? The natural, which is the flesh, flesh has to be out of the way to be in the presence of the Lord. Look, we can't have church unless you get rid of the natural and the flesh. That's why it's so important to come in here and forget about everything. That's why the Bible says lay aside every way. I cannot come up here with everything I've got going on uh, today and tomorrow and try to get up here and talk to you about the presence of God and the, the, the glory of God and the healing power of God because flesh is going to interfere with that. Flesh is going to try to cause a problem with that. So what does Brother David do? Before church tonight, I had to find me a place, and I had to kill the flesh. I had to say, okay, flesh, this is what happened today, but you got to get out of the way because I'm trying to get in the spirit. You say, well, Brother David, how do you do that? I ask God. I kill it in repentance. I say, God, everything that's happened today, everything that I've heard today, everything that's been frustrating in my life today, I kill it right now. I'm asking you to forgive it, put it away, put it aside. I know that some of the things is going to be there tomorrow, but right now, God, I want to get in tune with what is going on tonight because somebody's going to walk in here and they're going to need something in the spirit and I can't do it without you so God move me out of the way do you realize repentance and flesh getting rid of the flesh and controlling the flesh is moving you out of the way so God can step in can everybody give the Lord a praise amen that's how you have church let's have church when we say let's have church everybody what we need to do is say Come on, Lord, just take over right now. Just take control. Let God. And, and so the fruit of the Spirit is the byproduct of our relationship with, with Him. It's what we see. But the flesh has got to go. you got to get rid of the flesh. The flesh will talk you out of the things. If you wake up in the morning, watch what's going to happen. You, you, you go to bed at night and say, you know what, I'm going to read, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read uh, the Bible. I'm going to read about 20 minutes before I go to work tomorrow. And you know what, when you get up, the first thing that's going to happen, the flesh is going to say, you're too tired. The flesh is going to say, no, you don't have time. And, and the flesh is going to say, no, you, you can do it this afternoon. But we have to overcome the flesh 
uh, to get to the spiritual blessing. So sometimes it requires sacrifice. And so I may get up and I may look and say, well, you know what, I've got time, but I, I don't know. I, I really need to get all this stuff together or i got to do this. And I said, no, I'm going to make time. And so that flesh is fighting and the spirit is, is, is overtaking. And so I, I begin to read the word. And then it's like, okay. And then, see, that it's always a battle. Even when I get up here and preach, I know. One of my biggest prayers before I get up here and preach is that I can, can handle anything that comes against me because the devil would like to interfere. He would like, and, and, and let me show you how, the, can I just show you how the devil works? I may be sitting here and I may be preaching away and all of a sudden I see Brother Eric get up and he leaves out. The devil, I'm just t- telling from a preacher standpoint, the devil might be saying, oh, Brother Eric, he, he, was probably, he didn't like something you said. He got mad. He walked out, whatever. Uh, Brother Eric, he, he, he just, he, he didn't like that scripture or something. Or, 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 or you, I don't know, something else. And, and you know what? I got to where I'm like, I, I'm not listening to you, devil. I don't get you. Yeah, that's, I, that's not true. You know, that's not true. And I fight the spirits and stuff. And, and all of a sudden, I look. My wife's got this look on her face. And, and she's, she's looking. And, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong, you know. And, and the, the devil will talk to you and tell you things and make, you th- make things appear that is bad or something's going wrong, you know. And so, anyway, that's what I'm saying. The flesh, you got to fight the flesh because the devil will do everything in his power to try to stop the spirit. But in order to be spiritual fruitfulness, fruit, you, in order to have that fruitfulness, we've we got to overcome the flesh. Can you give the Lord a praise? Amen. So, John 15 and 1 through 4, he says, I'm the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except ye abide in me. As a branch, our purpose is being established. In Christ, we are to... Look, our purpose is to witness the world, but our purpose, we're saved. The Lord has saved us. Our purpose is to witness and save others, bring them to this truth. But our purpose is to bear fruit. Now, why do we bear fruit? So that others can see a light. They can see a difference. They can see. They should want that, amen, and desire to have that. And so those who do bear fruit are pruned. Now, we go through pruning, don't we? Sometimes we have to be pruned, and we, that's difficult. But when you say that prayer, God, do whatever it takes, watch out. God, I want to be in your will. Watch out. God, I just want you to use me. Do whatever you got to do, God, through and through. Watch out, because he's going to do it. He's going to do it because he knows what he's got to do to make you more fruitful. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, fruitful. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say you're fruitful. You're fruitful. Now, don't say you're fruity. Say you're fruitful. Okay? (laughs) You're fruitful. Amen. Those who bear fruits are blessed of God. Those who bear fruits have a relationship with God. Pruning is necessary in growth. Fruit does not grow In the notch of the tree, it grows out on the limb. Now watch this. But the limbs must stay attached to the tree. In our lives, our jobs, our responsibilities, our friends, our desires, whatever you do, it don't matter what you do, you still must stay attached to the church. Okay? So, we must stay attached to the tree, the church, the word, truth. We often face difficult and unnatural settings. In life where everything in life operates against the spiritual realm. It's precisely at these times that God gives us His anointing and a spiritual excellence can be manifested. We receive by the power of God's Spirit. How many want to receive a blessing? Everybody's going to raise their hand. Well, you got to have and you got to be in the Spirit to receive the spiritual fruit. 
You got to be in the Spirit. And so, fruit does not grow independently of the tree as the life flows from the taproot on through the main trunk out the limbs. Jesus does not say that we are known by our bark or by our leaf, but he says we are known by our fruit. All right, now let me just visit this and we're going to get out of here and move on. Go home. Watch this right here. When we are known about our fruits, it is not enough to say that you're a child of God. When you say you're a child of God, you're known by your bark. You're known by uh, the leaf. But do you represent what the fruit is? Because that's what people care about the most. When I go to the nursery and say, give me a peach tree. But I don't want any fruit. I just want something that looks like a peach tree. I don't want to grow fruit because then i got to deal with picking it, you know, and taking it, uh, you know, and, uh, you, you know, we got to can it and do all that stuff. I don't want the fruit. I just want the looks of the tree. No, we don't do that. Amen. So right here, do you represent God? It's not enough that we're apostolic. We're not just the bark. We're not just the tree. It's not, it's not enough that we just say, I'm a member of this church. But do we represent the fruit of what we believe? Anybody can sit in here and say, I'm a member of this church. But you could be just the bark. You, should, you could be just the tree. Are you the fruit that everybody looks at? Praise God. I, I don't have time to get into this. But anyway, uh, people look at us. Do, and so our conversation, everything about us, but what are you talking about the fruit? A lot of people want to come to this church, and, and, I, and I've had people tell me, say, Brother David, I, my wife got in a situation just the other day, and she was witnessing some people. And people want what we got. They want to be what we are, but they don't want the Holy Ghost, the evidence, the speaking in other tongues. Oh, I don't know about all that. And the reason they don't want it, they don't understand it. But the Bible says that's the evidence that you have the fruit. And, and, and I can tell you a story. I don't have time. I'm going to save it for a later date. But we heard an incredible story today about the evidence, speaking in other tongues. And I, I, I will share it. I'm going to save it because I, I, want to, I, I, I want to move on. But what I'm saying is many people like to say this is the church. They want to sit in here, but they don't want to to receive the fruit. You're not going to be blessed. You're not going to be saved if you don't have the fruit. The fruit is, could I tell you, the fruit is the best part of the tree. I don't want to just be set. The world's eating bark. The world's eating just the limb. The world's eating the root. The world, and, they, and they're satisfied. Amen? But I want the fruit. I want what God's promise was. Amen? Would you give the Lord a praise? Go ahead and stand. Go ahead and stand. You can stand in Jesus' name here. Amen. I don't want to just be labeled this. I want to be the fruit of this. I don't want to have Victory Apostolic Church on the sign and not have victory. I want to eat of the fruit and have victory. Amen. Praise God. Not only are we known, but also we are to be known by our fruit. Our fruit either brings glory our reproach, what is it going to be? I want my fruit to bring glory. John 15 and 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Now, now here's another thing. I don't have time to get on this either. God don't want you to just bear fruit. He wants you to bear much fruit. We, we have this mentality that just give me a blessing. When God says, okay, but I want to give you blessings. Look at the, the loaves and the fishes. Did the Bible, didn't the Bible say they were still, they fed all the women, the children, the men, and still had 12 baskets left over full? Sometimes they, they limited God in a way. They was like, they're going to feed just the people that's here. And God said, no, I, I, there, there could be more people walk up. And I, I believe that God would have kept filling it and kept filling it and kept filling it. We're the ones that limit God. Hey, don't limit God. Be fruitful. Let God bless. People are examining us. They're looking at us. They want to see what you got on your tree there. Amen.
I'm not going to be just put on. If I'm going to be put on display for the world, I want them to see something. Amen. I want them to see my fruits. By my fruits, they're going to know me. Amen. Now, the book of Proverbs 8 and 34. Now, this is a good scripture right here. We're talking about being blessed. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Do you hear what God's saying tonight? He said, you're blessed if you just hear me. Oh, I wish I could hear the Lord. Hey, you can hear the word, the, the Lord through his word. Now, I want to go on and look at that. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates. Well, there's a bunch of messages. I feel like Brother J.H. Osborne tonight. I feel like... Yeah, he reads the title or the introduction, and you can get about 20 messages out of Brother J.H. Harsman's introduction. And I feel like there's a bunch of messages coming out of here. But blessed is the man that heareth me. You came tonight. I know you heard my voice, but you heard me speak the word of God. So God has already said that you're going to be blessed. And you don't have to walk in here and say, well, Brother David said, I'm gonna be, I didn't say nothing. God said, you're going to be blessed for hearing me, hearing the word. And he said, watch daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Now, here's the other message, and I'll just give you the little pre preview of it. Do you know what the gates represented? The gates, everybody in the morning that came to the city, if they had a major or they had a decision to make for the day, there was important people, there were counselors, there were priests, there were uh, influential men gathered at the gates at the start of the day, and they'd walk there, and they could ask a question, and they would get them going for their day. God is telling us that we need to watch daily at the gates. You need to get up in the morning at the gate. What's the gate? The Word, and say, God, I don't know what I'm facing today, but would you just help me, guide me through the day? God, I just need you to, to walk with me. I'm at the gate today. Some people, they, they don't even, they bypass the gate. I don't need counsel. I don't need nobody to talk to me. I, I know what I'm doing, but I need to know what God says. I need to know what God is doing and what he wants me to do. So it said, watching daily at the gates. I'm going to hang out at the gates. I'm going to hang out at the gates because it's where it's happening, at the gates. And then it said, waiting at the post of the doors. The Hebrew interpretation of the post at the door means opening the house. God, open up the doors. Open up the house for me today. Amen. When the Israelites leave out in the morning, they say, bless God me as I enter out of this door. And then when they come back in, they say, God, bless me as I enter in back in my house. So I'm asking God today three things I want you to remember when you leave out of here is that you are blessed. Say, I'm blessed. For hearing the word, and then I'm blessed at the gates, and I'm blessed at the doorposts. So I'm blessed by hearing God's word. I'm going to go to the gates where God can speak to me and give me direction. But God, open up the door for me so I can receive a blessing. How many need a blessing? That's a stupid question. I'm not, I shouldn't even ask. Let me take it. Let me run that back. I'm not going to ask you, do you want a blessing? I know you want a blessing. All right, well, let's open up the door. Would you open, how do you open the door? Lift up your hands and open up the door. Open up the gate. Open up the doorpost right now. Come on, get, get serious about this as we leave out of here. Ask God for a blessing. God, I need a, I need a blessing. I need a blessing, God, physically. I need a blessing financially. Just call it out. What do you need a blessing for? In Jesus' name, I need a financial blessing, God. In Jesus' name, I need a physical blessing. In Jesus' name, I need a decision-making blessing right now. God, in Jesus' name, I need my family say blessing. I need a healing for my, my, my husband or my, my spouse or my family or somebody. In Jesus' name, open up the door. That's the door. Open it up and give God praise. Amen. You're at the gate. You're acknowledging the fact that, God, I have a need, and God is going to spiritually bless us. Amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, would you give the Lord a praise? <laughs> praise God. Praise the Lord. We uh, opened up the little jar 
uh, Sister Amy fixed some pears the other night, and we were sitting there, and she put her fork in it, and she said, God bless Sister Charlotte. And I was like, I was looking around, I was, I, she said, the pears. I said, oh, yes. She brought some pears a while back, and we ate them, and I said, God bless Sister Charlotte. Hey, look, God is wanting somebody to open up a jar of fruitfulness, amen, this week. Taste and see that the Lord is good. When it's getting bad, reach up there on the shelf in your Bible. You got a bunch of canned goods, and you can open it up and say, God, this is what I have need of. I need something, Lord. I need to taste something, Lord, that will bless me today. Amen, in Jesus' name. I I don't know. I I feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm telling you, I'm just going to come right out and say it. Brother Eric, it, it... I've already said uh, the devil fights because I don't want you, if you take out and leave, whatever, you know, I don't want you to get mad at it. But I'm, can I just say this? Brother Eric, I am claiming your family in Jesus' name. Right beside you on that pew where they belong. I believe that. Amen. Do you believe it? Give the Lord praise. I believe it. Sister Glenda, I'm claiming your family in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. Sister Julie, amen, Brother Adam, I'm claiming your families in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe God's going to send them, amen. I feel that so strongly tonight, amen, that God is going to, he's going to bless and touch our families in Jesus' name. God bless you. I, I tell you, you get excited. L- let me just, uh, let me get away from here, <laughs> okay. Maybe we can dismiss over here, okay. Because it's really tough right there, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a blessed week. Be much in prayer for everybody. And uh, I'm going to be praying for you if you'll be praying for me. I hope you be safe going home. In Jesus' name, God bless you tonight, amen.